Uh, they're called magic panel storage. And really what they are is, well, I'll show you. All right. All right, so what I use is hog rings. This is what I use to connect them. They are bigger than a rabbit hutch clip. And because of that, it allows the panels to be flexible, to bend. So here we are. A box of these have 100 hog rings in it and cost $3.50 currently. I don't know what they'll cost later in a month, but right now they cost $3.50. So I'm gonna put this in. I'm not gonna go on the edge on the bottom hole, I'm going to go on the second one up. Otherwise, these little hog rings will slide down and get caught on the corner. So this has a little screw on it that prevents it from closing all the way. If you were actually putting these in a pig's nose, you wouldn't want it to close all the way. But with these guys, I want them to close a lot, clo a lot further than if it was in a pig nose. All right, so now here, there's the beginning of my gates. So I like to have these too high. So I'm gonna go ahead and open those up next to each other. And again, I'm gonna go on the second one, not the first one. If I do it on these corners, it catches the corner and it, it doesn't open as well. One of the reasons I love these, besides the cost, instead of pet gates, is that they're eternally uh, changeable. You can, you can pop the little pieces off and change the shape. This is what they look like as a fence. All you need is a little electric stake. If you want a straight line, you need to use an electric stake, but if you're going in a circle or in a square, you don't need even any, even that support. I use it as a hinging door on a coop. I just use plumber's tape on the hinge part. To repair a rabbit cage, I had this that could not support a feeder, so I put the panel here, cut a couple pieces so the feeder could fit through, and now it's supporting itself. And then it's a door. Again, hog rings to hold it together. This is a low one to keep the ducks out of the strawberries and then Kaya put a screen door over the top because she didn't like that the chickens could get over it. So the chickens don't mess with it. If it's too high, like if there's one, two panels, the chickens won't go over it and the ducks can't get over it or through it. If you just want ducks to stay out, you can do it one row. But then the chickens will get in. <laughs> Which I don't mind because they're going in there and they're scratching up some of the old dead material out. Um, but Kai didn't like it, so she put an old screen door on it. I used it one layer high attached with plumber's tape to keep the ducks and the chickens out of the rabbit manure. Here, I did it too high, two panels high, 
to keep the ducks and the chickens out. I used it here so that we could use it as a gate. It's attached to the chain link by hog rings. And that's to keep, when we need to get the ducks to go in a certain direction, this keeps them from coming through this space. What I want to show you is that I can take this one layer fencing, turn it into a two layer fence, and then that I can make a cage over the top uh, so that more persistent birds like turkeys or leghorn chickens cannot get in. All right, it's always easiest <clears throat> to put the little links on if it's folded over on itself. Um, make sure when you buy new pa uh, panels that they're the same size as your old panels. Some of them have bigger grids, some of them are actually, their um, diameter is smaller, their, uh, their outside diameter is smaller. You want them to match the ones you already have. I like the ones that are 14 inches. Okay, so what I'm showing you, or trying to show you, is that you could just build a cage system over the top. You see that this is here, and it's going to fold over. I, I'm only going to put a couple of links to show you that it can be fully enclosed, because what I would recommend doing, instead of fully enclosing it, is having snaps here that you can use so you can pop it open like a lid. All right, so if you wanted to fully enclose the darn thing, all you do is just put another hog ring on. Just like you did on the straightaway, and now it's permanent. Ta-da! What you'll find is that the more flattened out it gets, the harder it is to get the rings in. So it really is easier to like build the cage on the side like flap it over and do it up on the side and then just lift it up and pull it over <coughs> that's much easier than trying to build it as you go across because then you're having to lean across it significantly and it's kind of frustrating I'm going to show you how to take them off now. Um, all you do, if you want to be able to reuse them, you have to pull them off straight, which can be tricky. So instead, I just keep it simple. You just bend it open like that. And they come right off. Now one that's been twisted like this, one's, one that's been twisted like this can't be reused unless you straighten it back out so that they're so that it's flat all right this is plumber's tape it comes in a big roll we cut it like this we cut it like that all right so I cut it on the big holes so that there are two small holes. The big holes, a normal screw, will the head will go right through that big hole, so we cut it so that we have two holes to attach things with. And we use these plumber's tape as fasteners, but also as hinges. And you, I use them to attach wire fencing or these grids to wood. Okay, it's April, and this is why I have so many layers.
That side is uncovered and fine. This side has tomatoes and basil and stuff, so we're gonna leave it covered. Close this back down. So many layers. So important. So important to have so many layers.